Well, it's great to be here in Canada, at least virtually. I, I look forward to telling you a little bit about my story and why I am so excited about Bitcoin and all the technologies surrounding it. Way back when, I, I started out as a venture capitalist. I invested in a, a number of different companies. We had the computer revolution and a lot of great companies came out of that. And then we had the internet revolution. A lot of great companies came out of that. And now I think we've got the Bitcoin revolution. Um, the internet revolution was incredibly wonderful and uh, some great things happened and big industries got transformed. Uh, and I was able to succeed by backing companies that transformed communications and information and entertainment and gaming and a whole number of different uh, industries. What I look for as a venture capitalist is industries that are kind of run by a monopoly or an oligopoly. And those industries are usually providing bad service at a high cost. And I'm always looking for that new technology that can come into those industries and be, be the beginning of transforming it and allow entrepreneurs to kind of wedge into those industries and then grow from there. Then uh, there was this guy, he's from Korea, and he came and he visited me and he said, about 40% of Korea is now playing one game. I think it was called Lineage. And Lineage was taking so much of people's uh, excitement that he decided he was very successful in business and he decided he had to also be successful in Lineage. And so when he was away from the game, he, and he had to go to work, he hired a guy to be his avatar to play lineage while he was at work. And so his avatar would get stronger and more powerful, and so he would have the strength and power in the physical world, but he'd also have it in this virtual world. And when I started to think about that, I thought, oh, wow, there's, there's gonna be a virtual world, and then there's gonna be the physical world, and we're gonna live in both of these virtual goods, virtual money, virtual life. Ultimately, that's virtual government. When Bitcoin came along, I went, whoa, this is it. I had been exploring a lot of different digital currencies before that, and I saw Bitcoin, and I said, wow, this is a currency that is decentralized. It keeps a perfect ledger through the blockchain. It is an extraordinary new technology and a new currency that can be decentralized, it can be global and frictionless, it's, it's awesome. And I got all excited and I, I backed a guy who ran CoinLab and he said, um, hey, I can get you some Bitcoin if you want. And I said, yeah, and I gave him 250,000 and he said, okay, I'm gonna take this and some other money and we're gonna buy an ASIC, uh, an, art of, uh, or a, an application specific IC chip that will mine faster than anything that's out there. And so we can actually get you Bitcoin for like $4 a Bitcoin, not, not $6 where the market was. And I said, great, let's do it. They finally gave him the ASIC and he started to mine. And so we started to get some Bitcoin and that Bitcoin uh, was stored in a place called Mt. Gox. And of course, Mt. Gox imploded, they disappeared the money. And I thought after Mt. Gox took all that money, I thought, too bad. This virtual currency was had so much promise, I thought this is going to put an end to it. But Bitcoin only dropped about 15% on that news. And so I thought, wow, we are really onto something here. Somebody really needs this. When the market came crashing down, there were buyers that kept it up. I thought it was going to go to zero. And so I, th I thought, what are people using this for? And I did some research and I discovered that the unbanked are using it. The people who the banks push away because it costs $200 per account to regulate people, they don't want to take small accounts. And so suddenly the unbanked had a new way to do business, to participate in the world economy. And that was a breakthrough. And then people were using it to send money to their families overseas. Apparently, people used to use uh, Western Union, and it cost something between 8 and 16% to send the money overseas. Well, this was a frictionless way to do it, and it was almost free.
And then people were using it to store value. People felt like, hey, I can take this down in the United States or I can travel to somewhere else and I can take it down there. This is a currency that's open and available to everyone in the world, anywhere in the world. And so I thought that's really a major breakthrough too. And then, uh, and then people were using it because it was keeping a perfect ledger. So they were keeping perfect records of all of their accounts through the blockchain. So I got very excited about it, even though it had dropped and we had lost the Bitcoin, I continued to buy. And when the big Silk Road auction came up, when, uh, when the US Marshal's Office confiscated the money from the Silk Road, they put it up to auction. I bid above the market and uh, I was a little surprised because I got a lot more Bitcoin than I bargained for. Than I, I got all nine lots because I bid above market and I guess nobody else had. So, um, so I got all this Bitcoin and I thought, well, you know, I'm kind of glad I do. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought I would rather have Bitcoin than any of these fiat currencies. My son, Adam, uh, started Boost BC. Boost is an accelerator and it started as an accelerator specifically for Bitcoin. And one of the uh, tribesmen, he calls them, who came to Boost was from Argentina. And he said, yeah, I love Bitcoin. And Adam said, why? And he said, well, because my family has watched it, its fortune disappear three times in my life. And I'm only 30 years old. So in effect, every decade, the politicians or the governments of Argentina have basically taken fortunes away from people by, by messing with a currency or, or having too much debt out there or from many other things. So I started to think about my Bitcoin and I thought, wow, well, I think I'd rather own this than the dollars in Wells Fargo. And I started to f um, hear about all the hacks that are happening on the banks and, uh, and the banks are getting hacked all the time. And the Bitcoin blockchain has been secure. It has never been hacked, you know, knock on wood. It has never been hacked and it is completely secure and it keeps a perfect record of all uh, transactions on, in Bitcoin. But, but some other things have happened here because Bitcoin brought along the blockchain, which is this great technology. So you can start owning your own data on the blockchain. And then once it's on the blockchain, you can start saying, well, this data I'm going to be, I'm going to allow this person to use or this company to use. And, and maybe you'll start getting paid for your data. So that's one kind of big breakthrough. Another big breakthrough is the smart contract. And Ethereum has been very big on smart contracts and it has uh, focused on these smart contracts so that I can set up a contract with you in software and whatever happens sets uh, a, the switch off that sends the money in the contract to the right people. So imagine a movie, uh, you watch Star Wars and there, there's 15 minutes of credits. They can actually put all of that into one big smart contract. And when Star Wars does $300 million in sales for a quarter, Boom, it shoots out to everybody who, who gets it and deserves it. And they don't need to have all the lawyers involved. They don't have to have all the accountants involved. It just happens. And then if you combine the blockchain with smart contracts and deep learning, uh, you have a big opportunity in healthcare. We're gonna have our data up there. I'm gonna be able to put you know, my, all my healthcare records, my blood test results, my uh, my genetic history, all that stuff can go up into the cloud. And then I can add things like my Fitbit results or what I had for breakfast or where I live or where I flew to or whatever. So different things will affect different people. And there's no doctor in the world that in that 12 years can memorize all that information about all those individual people. And so I think healthcare is going to change in an enormous way. Healthcare is probably one of the biggest industries in the world. But there's one industry that provides the worst service at the highest cost, government. Government provides the worst service at the highest cost. But the great news here is that government now is starting to bifurcate. 
is starting. Part of it is at this virtual level, and part of it is at this land-based level. And at the virtual level, governments can now compete for you. They can, they can one, one might provide better social security, one might provide, provide a better pension or, or medical insurance. All of those services that governments provide that can be done virtually can now be done with Bitcoin on the blockchain with smart contracts and big data. This is one of the biggest sea changes we've ever had in the history of the world. And so governments are responding one of two ways. Some governments are saying, no, we like it the way it is. We want our currency. We want to control our currency. We want to use our currency to control our people. Um, Japan's doing just the opposite. Japan said, Bitcoin's a national currency, and here's how you do an ICO. And what happened then was all those bright entrepreneurs and all that creativity and all that technology that was going to happen in China is now moving to places like Japan. These governments are trying to attract you. They need you because they want to make sure that you, you work with them because all of the best entrepreneurs in the world and all the most dynamic people are mobile. And those mobile people will go to the place that provides the best, most open, the most free, the most honest uh, environment for them to operate their business. So we're, we're going to start seeing this amazing sea change. Uh, the world is, has just opened up. The geographic borders have dropped a lot for the physical space. But in the virtual world, the geographic borders have almost become invisible. And that is ripe for one of the greatest uh, renaissance transformations in the history of the world. And I'm excited to see it. And I'm glad you're excited to hear about it. I'm also glad to hear that a lot of you are going and doing something to help move this, this whole transformation of society forward. Uh, I'm proud to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Go get them.